Hello. Hi. Wait, I all zoomed out. Hi. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the beginning of another vlog. It is Tuesday afternoon, and I just got back from work, went out and picked up a few things from Woolies, typically what I get every single week. So nothing is new here, but I will show you what I got. And, um, yo load shedding has been having us in south africa okay it's been having us i'm so annoyed i'm so done with it i could not be bored. i'm just so done like it's two o'clock and i have to cook because at four o'clock i'm i'll be out of power until around half past six and i'm just like it's one of the reasons why i had to come back early so that i could at least cook some food it's just i'm over it i'm over it but anyway, you haven't seen one of these in a while. You guys know there's nothing new about seeing this on my channel. Uh, baby spinach for my smoothies. Yes, I have my smoothies every day. Monday to Friday, sometimes Monday to Thursday, but at the very least four times a week. I'm about to make myself one now. And my smoothies are simple. It's literally just spinach, yogurt, juice, if not this one. On a different day it's this one if not this one if not this one on a different day it's this one and I absolutely love these juices so it's yogurt a little bit of the juice and spinach and I drink it exactly like that that is my veggie intake for during the day and then at night maybe I will have normally what I do because I cook alone uh, I live alone uh, we need to thank Woolies for just being Woolies you know so normally what I do is I normally make meat. Throughout the week, I'll just cook meat and then I'll have it with woolly salads. And you guys know that some of my favorite ones is this one and ah, this one. The sweet curry pasta salad. Absolutely love them. Absolutely love them. So, so good. So today I'm going to put in some beef into the oven and then I'm just going to let it cook, especially now knowing that in an hour and a half, I'll be out of power. So I'm just gonna put it in the oven. It's gonna cook for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and then we're done. Um, strawberries, because what's new? Mm -hmm. uh, grapes, pretty much out of these since the last time uh, in my previous vlog where I had the picnic, charcuterie board, vibes, what, 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 with the, with the mister, Mr. Diesel. Um, and then I got Fiori, Forel, Forel, I said Fiori, Forel pears. I really, really enjoy these. I really enjoy these. You know how people feel about apples with uh, peanut butter? I feel the same way about Forel pears with peanut butter. It's weird. It's a thing. Okay. An extra one of these because, um, this week I'm trying this thing where I do not pour myself a drink when I come back from work. So I'm going to be drinking this instead of having a cool drink, instead of having a Oros, whatever. I'm just trying to eat really clean this week up until Friday and then I can have whatever I want. I don't even want to drink this whole week. So yeah, normally I pour myself a glass of something um, just before I go to bed. But honestly... I've got whiskey in the house. I've got Len Levet, Len Fetish. I've got uh, gin. In I've, I've, I've got it all. I've got wine. I just don't want to touch any of it this week. Nah, we're not going to do that. So right now, I'm going to pack the stuff away. And then I'm going to make my smoothie. And then I'm going to show you some books. Now, I don't want us to get into a fight about this. I receive books now, which is great, from publishers and all of that, which is which is fantastic, and I'm so, so grateful to them for sending me these books. But at the same time, I also still buy books. And the reason why I do that is because the people who work in those bookshops, they need our money so that they can work there and get salaries. So I do also still buy books. I still want to show support to my favorite authors. I still want to show support to the people who work in the stores and all of that. So I do buy books. And in the last, I'd like to say maybe three weeks to a month, I did pick up five books. And I will show you what those are. But before we do that, let me pack this stuff away, make my smoothie, and then we can sit down and get into it.
Okay, so I won't even lie. I won't even lie. I did some damage, okay? I did some damage. And I need you guys to understand that there's valid reasons why I buy books. And I explained that I am a reader. I read a lot and I enjoy reading. And I am currently building my library. It's tricky. As you can see, now I'm starting to pile books on top of one. It's just... And there's books down here and there's books in here it's 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 a lot but at this point i'm actually thinking of getting a bookshelf done or buying a bookshelf and putting it in the room where i record my sit down videos because it's tricky it's tricky um but i picked up some books y'all okay um <laughs> in total we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine Hmm? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight books in total. And we're going to go through them. I'm not going to tell you the synopsis and all of that. I might just read a little bit, but to be honest, it's fine. It's fine. Okay? It's fine. Um, so in no order of how I bought them, these are the books that I picked up. So the first one is by Meg Mason, and this is Sorrow and Bliss. The reason why I picked up this book is because it was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And a lot of the time, I always check the long list and the short list, and then I read the synopses of the books, and then I decide which book I want to pick up. If at all, I do want to pick it up. And this one is a book that was uh, released last year. Um, and it's... It's about a woman by the name of Martha Friel, who's clever, beautiful, brilliant, and she's a writer and has loved and been loved every day for her whole life by her husband. So why is everything broken? Maybe Martha is just someone who finds it harder to be alive than most people, or maybe she has believed that there's something wrong with her. First to return to her childhood home with her dysfunctional bohemian parents, Martha is, has one last chance. To find out whether life is ever too broken to fix. I mean, are you kidding? Or whether maybe by starting over, she will get to write a better ending for herself. Come on. Come on. Okay, come on. The next one is also another book that was all the rage. Ex excuse. It's called All My Rage. <laughs> it was another book that was um, quite, quite spoken about quite a lot, especially by YouTubers internationally that I watch. And this is... All My Rage by Sabah Tahir. And this is essentially a brilliant, unforgettable, and heart-wrenching story about family and forgiveness, love and loss that crosses generations and continents. It is basically set in two time spans, Lahore, Pakistan, then, and Juniper, California, now. So that's, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I can't wait to read that one as well. And then the two that I've always wanted to pick up and never got a chance to pick up, I love mythology. I love Greek mythology. That's why there's Circe and and uh, what's this? The Song of Achilles and all of that. I've loved Greek mythology since I was in high school. I've really just, I've been a fan. And I remember watching Noelle Gallagher the other day and she was talking about the woman of Troy and the silence of the girls, both by Pat Barker. Basically, this is the first one, the silence of the girls, which was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2019. And then there was The Woman of Troy. So basically, The Silence of the Girls follows the story of, from the point of view of uh, Perseus. And Perseus is, um, if you follow mythology, a lover to Achilles, but in this story, you're basically following the fight that Achilles has or the disagreements that the, all of that that Achilles has with Agamemnon who is um, the brother to Menelaus and Menelaus is the husband to Helen of Troy so either way you follow her story and um, it's really just a tough story about how women are viewed in the time what she goes through with Achilles and Agamemnon and Agamemnon Agamemnon but um, it's just a story of really vengeful men who are all about themselves and their ego and their pride and how it impacts the women that 
are living in that time, more specifically Perseus. So, Perseus. So this is very interesting. I can't wait to read that. This was before Troy. And then you have the women of Troy. And this essentially is the story of Helen of Troy, who is uh, captured, not captured, who is taken by Paris, who happens to be Hector's brother. If you've watched Troy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And this follows the women of Troy, who are Helen, Cassandra, Amina, Hecuba, and Perseus. So can't wait to read them apparently they are written impeccably well and if you're somebody who loves mythology which i am i'm that person i love mythology i picked it up and from another store i forgot where i had heard about this collection of essays from um these are short stories and this is uh, the sex lives of african women i mean already the title itself had me go yes Yes, I want to read about that. So uh, this is by Nana Dakoa Sekia, Sekiyama. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, Benedine uh, Avaristo calls this fascinating and Bolu Babalola says it is a vital treasure. So this is a book that follows the sex lives or stories of different African women from LGBTIQ lgbtqia plus members and also her story as well finding her way to sexual freedom the author of the book and um, another couple of stories of how women african women view sex and their sex lives essentially so this is very very interesting can't wait to read this as well this should be quite sexually liberating and then in the for the love of short stories, for the love of short story collections, for the love of anthologies, I went down a rabbit hole trying to find some of the most loved short story collections, um, you know, in recent times. The reason why is because of, where is it? Where is it? No, 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 that's one of my favorite books, The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. It's over here, so you're not going to be able to see it. It's because of The Secret Lives of Church Ladies that I picked these up. This is uh, Loud Black Girls, which is edited by Yomi Adegoke and Elizabeth Uvibien. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. But this is a collection of essays by women who talk about being loud black girls being being black girls you know um so stepping into the minds of these younger women who have expressed so much to say so much to express so much to challenge and this is a quote by benedine everest this is filthy animals by brandon taylor and he's the author behind real life and there's quite a number of stories in here we've got 11 stories potluck little beast flesh uh mass apartment what made them made you meet and so many others so i really can't wait to read this as well but my most favorite one that i was looking forward to and i found out about this one from jack edwards and i follow jack edwards this is a little bit of a darker one um this was shortlisted for the 2021 international booker prize and this is the dangers of smoking in bed by mariana enriquez so welcome to buenos aires a place of nightmares twisted imaginings where missing children come back from the dead and unearthed bodies carry terrible curses thrumming with murderous intentions family betrayals and morbid desires these stories shine a light on the violent city gripped by urban madness giving voice to the lost the oppressed and the forgotten lucid and darkly poetic unsettling and out otherworldly these tales of revenge witchcraft and fetishes are a masterpiece of contemporary gothic and bewitching explanation, exploration of the dark inclinations that threaten to lead us over the edge. Are you kidding me? <sighs> so that's pretty much all I picked up. I am currently reading um, How Beautiful We Were by uh, Imbolo Mbue, and I'm also reading um, Woman 
eating by Claire Coda and I started that one over the weekend I'm about 40 pages into that one really interesting follows the girl by the, a girl by the name of Lydia who is a vampire and basically she grows up with her mother in the small town in England and eventually when she gets older she decides that nope I want to do this life thing by myself she moves out of home puts her mother in an old age home and moves to London where she gets a studio apartment and proceeds to live her life she's a performance artist or something along those lines now the challenge is she's a vampire so when she was living with her mother they could easily get access to pig's blood when they <laughs> at the butchery where they lived at the butcher where they lived but now it's proving to be a lot more difficult because she can't get easy access to those things and the next best thing seems to be humans <laughs> so i'm really really excited with that one so so interesting the first 30 pages had me completely engrossed uh but now the power is gone so i am going to pretty much read um imbolombu is how beautiful we were for the next hour and a half or so and then the power should be back and then i'll make dinner and i'll show you what i'll be making but you've pretty much seen i just did up some fried beef in the uh, in the oven and i'm gonna have it with this, those woolly salads and call it a day Such charmers. So, uh, if you hear that in the back, it's the machine. Okay, I'm doing a load of laundry. 
just one load, small things. Um, but I was at the shops and it's been a minute since I bought these drinks of mine. And you know I love to try out different drinks, kombuchas, what what, and then just give them a try. So I'll always buy like five or six at a time, but different ones, and then um, kind of gauge from there which ones I like. So these collagen drinks I've had before, and I think I've showed you guys on uh, the channel before. I love these. These are actually really, really nice. And um, they're sugar-free, they're superfood enriched, um, 10 grams beauty collagen, 100 milligrams vitamin C. So this is the blueberry flavor and this is the coconut flavor. I really, really like them. I really like them. And what is new to me is these kombuchas. Let me show you. There. Ainch. 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 Mm, let me not drop it. Um, the uplift kombucha. We've got blueberry pomegranate. Blueberry pomegranate. I, ca I can't wait to taste that one. Uh, pineapple peach, which is already making me think about iced tea. I know that's wrong. Uh, and um, ginger lemon. So, actually, I like ginger lemon because I like the ginger lemon juice from Woolies. So this one might be my first try, actually. And then what in the hell? Oh, okay, it's coming off. My nail. Oh, and I did my nails recently. Uh, last week. Not recently, last week. But um, there's lots to talk about. There's lots to talk about. Let me just put the stuff away, try and make myself something to eat, and uh, we'll talk, okay? The power's about to go. The power's about to go in two hours or so. Um, so I need to eat something. So that when it goes, I either leave the house, or I read, or I, do, I, I submit my assignments. <laughs> They're ready. You know, it's just so hard when you when you feel like, I don't know how I feel about this assignment. Do I submit? Do I submit? Maybe let me give myself a day to read it. But I'll submit them today. I'll submit them. Yeah. Okay. Let me pack the stuff away. So my darlings, to me, this is what a happy fridge looks like. A happy fridge is a real fridge. It's not a fridge for the aesthetics. It's not a fridge for the what. There's order, but also at the same time, there's no order. You know what I'm saying? I need to, I've always been saying that I'm going to sort out that top part right there. It's fine. I need to just get more of these, which I will pick up. But this is where I keep my waters. These are the grab and goes. Okay. I don't drink this when I'm sitting in the house, just chilling. I drink normal water. Okay. But these are the grab and goes. I'm heading out. I want some water. And then, you know, you know, I have a whole fridge, fridge organization video thing. And then down here are my... Uh, what are these things? Fruits. My weekly fruits. It's berries and strawberries. Blueberries and strawberries in there. And then that's a salad that I really, really enjoy from Woolies. Some grapes. And then I've got the juices here. And eggs. Butter. A real fridge, my darling. Things you use every day. Fruits, vegetables, tomatoes at the back there. Extra, my, my, my... Bell peppers. My peppers are looking kind of sad. But extra veggies at the back there, which I typically will use like on a Sunday, which is tomorrow. And this is what makes this fridge real. Okay? Because we all have leftovers in the house. And you have to kind of keep them somewhere in containers. So that's why I keep them. So I've got my lemons here, my cucumbers. Okay, okay, thank you. And then just leftovers. And then down here, it's a whole entire mess, but that's a story for another day. And then here we've got my oat milk, my full cream milk, my oat milk, my juices, my weekly juices, and a bottle of wine that hasn't even been opened. So, yeah. That's a real fridge, kids. Okay? That's a real fridge. Thanks. Do 
Alright, um, so before I faint, I'm going to make myself something to eat. Um, I'll show you that. It really isn't that big of a deal. It's going to be uh, two slices because I'm hungry. Um, and it's going on one o'clock. So I'm going to have two slices of avocado on toast. Maybe with some tomatoes on top. A little bit of seasoning with a cup of coffee. That's it. have to take everything now. So uh, I just put the spin cycle on pause for a little bit. I'm gonna try and have this conversation in 15, 15 minutes and less. As you can see, I just lit a candle because this week started out okay. This week started out okay. When I started filming the footage that you see in the beginning of this vlog, everything was fine. And then I wanted this vlog to take the shape of me talking about, you know, every single time I want to spoil myself or do something nice for myself or whatever. Uh, it comes with a lot of mixed feelings. Um, I don't consider buying a book spoiling myself. Multiple books at once, yes, definitely. But if I'm buying a book every once and again, I don't consider it spoiling myself. It's me using my adult money to do whatever I want with it. Um, but if I buy multiple books, now you're clocking the thousand rand mark or whatever, then that's definitely considered spoiling myself. And earlier on this week, <laughs> I spoiled myself. I did something that is on my arm and my wrist it's on my wrist and i wanted to film it and i wanted to film a whole unboxing of it and this and this and that and the other and talk about it and then the following day i heard devastating news i'm not gonna get upset with this upset means cry guys in this context hence why the candle is lit there's a candle upstairs in my bedroom that is lit all day that has been lit all day all night since i found out um a family member of ours by marriage like a cousin so by marriage um i'm not going to talk about i'm not going to mention their name i'm not gonna go into all the details uh but passed earlier on this week and she is a few years younger than me. And when I found out, I think I was, for a good day, I was in denial. I really was in denial. Um, especially in the way in which she passed. Her and I were not close, but we would talk from time to time. And she would call me uh, and ask to speak to me about, you know, her relationship with her sister, or if she was going through some mental struggles or whatever, and we talk about it via text and things like that. So, to have found that out, knowing that the last time I spoke to, I think wasn't, the last time we properly spoke without liking each other's posts or anything like that on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, the last time we actually properly spoke was in February of this year. And um, to have found that out 
and how in which it happened really upset me. My week went from a good start to a complete sink. Um, I'm expecting my partner to arrive, so I need to just not have my phone on silent. So, so I think that first day I was in disbelief. My sister and I were talking about it and we were just both in disbelief. Like we kept on calling her name, calling her name, calling her name, saying her name. And um, it just, it sucked. Like you don't have to be close to somebody to feel the pain of losing someone you know. And uh, it sucks. And for me, I, in truth, I struggle with funerals. I struggle with funerals. I couldn't go because this one was quite triggering for me. Um, and you know, in the black culture, they'll say like, no, how libona never and stuff. Like if you don't attend someone's funeral, if you don't attend people's funerals, then no one's going to attend yours. In my head, I'll be like, um, I'm dead at that time, so it's fine. If people don't want to attend it, it's fine. I'm dead. I'm dead, you know? Um, but, like, they'll say that to kind of make you feel bad. Meanwhile, forgetting that there's certain reasons why you don't attend certain functions. There's certain reasons why certain people don't have flowers in their homes. There's certain reasons why certain people don't attend weddings. Uh, certain reasons why certain people don't go to the park because there's children and the reason being that they they lost a kid or whatever there's reasons why people protect their mental space from being in certain situation scenarios because it's a good way to try and keep as stable as you can without falling deep into the darkness again um so I opted not to go. And I did go to her family home to see them. And um, it was hard. You know, I, I brought flowers and it, it was hard. So without saying too much on that, um, I just, her dad and my dad are really close. So I would see actually her dad more than I did her. Anyway. Yeah. So I believe she's resting with the angels now. Ah, the point of me mentioning that is because my vlog went completely south. After I found that out, I was going to talk about treating yourself, but you know, with someone with a personality like mine it's really hard to not feel bad when you treat yourself to something special or something expensive um so i am a big apple fan i think you guys have already established that and um i had the 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 apple series watch uh series four is it five four and um, it died on me at some point. Uh, and I used to love it as an everyday watch because all of my other watches are relatively, ex well, some are very expensive and the other ones are, are okay. They're a good price point uh, for every day. But I liked wearing this for every day because you can track mindfulness, get up, do this, you know. Um, so when my Apple Watch died, I think maybe two years ago or something, just like it was supposed to, I was doing an upgrade on it and the screen just went black. Uh, I took it in and um, to for them to check what the issue was. And then while I was there, I decided, well, I'm here now. I might as well, uh, I've been working my ass off, you know, with life, school, work, everything youtube everything i've been working my ass off um and i haven't done anything nice for myself like this on this scale 
Um, so I decided, well, let me trade that one in and let me get myself one of the latest ones. So I got a Series 7. There's a Series 8. But I got a Series 7 and the Nike... Uh, what's this? Midnight Aluminium Case uh, Black Nike Sports Band. And the one that I got is a 41mm because... My, my my wrist is very, very small. <laughs> my wrist is small. So, yeah. Um, so that's the, that's the, I was literally going to unbox everything and show you everything. But I picked it up the day I found out, or the day before I found out what I found out. And um, I haven't been able to since. So now it's, it's, it's on my arm. There it is, you know, with the, with the sports band. It's a really pretty watch. It's a really, really pretty watch, and uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't have much more to say, but baby girl must rest with the angels. We won't see her soon one day. So today is Monday. I just got back from work not too long ago and uh, I've got some meat going in the oven. I'm gonna have a very basic dinner tonight. Nothing worth cooking because it's just meat and a salad. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, you know, what I had said that I would discuss with you guys regarding, you know, just spending and feeling guilty. <clears throat> for spending your money or treating yourself, um, you know, in times where uh, just every now and again, you know what I'm saying? I seem to struggle with that quite a lot. And uh, last week, I did, I struggled with it quite a bit. And uh, I got myself the Apple Watch and over the weekend, also got myself some new Ray-Ban glasses and they are over there but I legit genuinely couldn't be bothered to go get it um, because I haven't physically been feeling well today uh, I don't quite know what the problem is uh, but I do have a pain on my back and I don't know if it might be the cost though or if it's I didn't sleep very well I'm, I'm not sure but I, I struggle with that a lot. I struggle to treat myself without feeling guilty that I have spent that kind of money without feeling like I'm going to be judged for spending that kind of money, whether I'm being judged by my family members or I'm being judged by friends or fa whoever. Um, I'm more concerned about being judged by family members as opposed to friends. Um, so I've, I'm really trying to unlearn that and also trying to learn that it's okay to treat yourself. You work really hard. Um, you know, you, you, you're always there helping out others as and when you can. Why can't you treat yourself to something nice, you know? So I got the Apple Watch and I also got the Ray-Ban glasses and I love them. And I don't feel, I did, I did feel a little bit guilty and maybe this is something that I'm going to have to have a therapy session with my, with my therapist about, but I'm willing to do that. Um, but I just, I just, I just feel like, you know, when, I want to know if I'm not alone in feeling that way. I feel like there's many of us who go through that where you feel like, you know what, this money 
could be better suited to do this, that, you know, the other, you need to pay this, you need to buy that, you need to do this, do that, buy that. And um, even though that is true, even though that is true, you also need to just find time sometimes to just, you know, do it for yourself, you know, um, treat yourself as well. Um, so yeah, like, it's been a rather quiet weekend with everything that has happened from the last time I spoke to you guys. Um, and now it's the beginning of a new week and I have to wrap this vlog up so that I can start filming the vlog for next week in the next two days or so. Um, so I'm, I'm quite tired as well. <laughs> I'm quite tired as well. I remember um, I'm currently having a conversation with Charity and we're talking about um, just burnout, you know. I feel for, like for so many of us at this time of the year, we are just so tired. We're done. Like as soon as October hits, we're done. You just don't want to do it anymore. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's how I feel. I feel like I'm just so tired. And it's crazy because we're going into October and October there's Vlogtober. So I need to try and keep the momentum of pushing three videos a week at least. Um, and then maybe I can rest some. Maybe this will be the first December where I choose to maybe take a week off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, Charity and I were talking about burnout. And I think for a lot of uh, working class citizens, once you get to... Um, just actually everybody, even even people who go to school and stuff. Once you get to this time of the year, we're all tired, you know, and the weather changes. And today was extremely hot and I'm wearing this long black dress from Fushini, which I love. I've got it in black, green and white. And I love them for summer because they're just open and they're flowy. And um, um, if you've watched my... Nespresso vlog, which is, well, you'd have to be a member to have seen that vlog. Um, I'm, I'm wearing this dress in that vlog, but I'll, I'll put up a picture uh, somewhere here so you can see it. Yeah, so I think I'm also just struggling with a little bit of burnout right now. So I do need to take just the next two days to just sleep, relax, read, do the things that I love to do. Um, and actually not feel guilty. That's, I think, another thing that I feel so guilty for taking time out and not recording and not picking up my camera. Um, I'm still struggling with that and working through it. Um, but I feel guilty if I go quite a long period of time without recording. But that's a conversation for another day. The books that I am reading, however, is I'm finishing off this. This is Mbolombue's... Um, Oh, thank goodness, there's 360 pages. This is Mbolo Mbue's uh, How Beautiful We Were. I'm about 302 pages in. It's got about 360 pages. So I am going to finish it tonight during load shedding. This book started off really, really well. And I talked about it in my previous vlog. But for some odd reason now, it's kind of taken a huge dip for me. I thought it would definitely be a four and a half out of five, four out of five, five out of five. It's actually probably looking to be a three out of five. And um, I can't talk too much about it because it is the Brown Skin Reads book club read for the September month. And um, uh, we have yet to announce the October uh, uh, book read. I'm here to, I was going to do an unboxing of some things from Take A Lot, but I think that will be part of the next vlog. So I hope you guys are well. Let me know how you feel about this feeling guilt thing and what have you um, when it comes to doing something nice for yourself. And I'm going to go and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and I'll see you very soon. Bye.